Seth, did you wanna? You're all set. You have a good meeting. Awesome. Thank you, Seth. Um, so I'm gonna read the um, Governor Baker's. Um, it's recording. Right. Push that. Got it. Um, on June 16, 2021, Governor Baker signed into law an act extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency. This act includes an extension until April 1, 2022 of the remote meeting provisions of his March 12, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. This meeting will be recorded and it can be viewed live on Situate Community Television Facebook page the recorded meeting will be available the following day on Comcast Channel 9 and YouTube Situate Community Television. Um, and this is the um, Shellfish Advisory Committee meeting. So welcome everybody. Um, our um, call to order at 7.37 and I apologize for the delay. We were waiting for a quorum and had a couple technical issues. Um, so our first agenda item is um, approval of the December um, 14, 2021 meeting minutes. Is there, I can motion, make a motion. Motion to uh, approve as submitted. Seconded. Seconded. Okay, all in favor. And I gotta, I've gotta do roll call if you remember. So Dave. Yes. Scott. Yeah. Jeff. Yes. Adam. Hi. Myself. Yes. Um, so um, approved. Um, the next um, agenda item is the aquaculture. Um, and this is uh, from last, uh, from December 14th, we had um, CSCR um, students present at Eelgrass Map and the follow up was to get a um, stamped survey um, from on the mean low tide water line, which we did um, from um, Merrill Engineering, and then to overlay the um, eelgrass data. So we have that. Um, and that is, as a reminder, that's the follow-up and that's what Susan Bryant will be showing. And you have co-host Susan, so you can share. Or if you wanna do an intro, Susan. She's muted. Oh, hold on. You should be able to unmute. Yep, Susan, Susan Bryant, yep. you should be able to mute. So. Yep, okay, you you're a host, so. Give me one minute to get the, uh, <clears throat> the overlaid one up. Um, well, I can do the one from the email quickly. <clears throat> um, are there any, is there any other, qu any questions from the committee on? So we're saying the engineered survey got done by the town? Yep, there was an engineered survey done by um, Merrill. Yep. And it only has the mean low tide mark on it. And then took that survey and had the, um, the so eogress data. Yeah, yeah, the dots. <laughs> Those colorful dots put on the survey. So we have that. And I will say that um, we can present it and then I will, we can post it to the, um, to our documents page. And I will also say that the last presentation and um, I can do a quick public service announcement while Susan's getting ready. Um, all of our documentation we've been posting to our Shellfish Advisory Committee webpage. And we have all of the water quality results in a folder. So if you wanted to go back and look at the water quality and the testing that the state does with, with Mike, um, it's, and we actually just posted the December. So every month it's posted um, and we've posted presentations and uh, we've done it and there's a document section, um, pretty easy to find. And we've posted presentations um, similar to the, like the DMF one that, that was done a couple months back and then the CSCR one that was done last week, uh, last meeting. So that's Excellent. all available on our website. And we will also post this, um, this as well. Thank you. And I'll also post, there's other pictures um, 
so you can zoom in. Okay, so I think you now see my screen. Yeah, yes. maybe if you put it in slideshow, you'll just see the one because there's, I think. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. And this, as as I can state, yes, the um, Merrill Engineering um, did this survey with the mean low um, tide, which is really close to that white cursor, if you see, or the black. Do you guys see my cursor right now? Or the black cursor, cursor. yes. Yes, we do. do. You see the okay. Sorry, so I can. Mine. <laughs> but this is the line that they came up with. Yep. So. Maybe start it. Can you start it at the channel? Can you go yeah. to the channel? So orient people like, like yeah. here's the. Okay. So here's the. So when we're looking at this area, I always use granite pieces that are uh, set for orientation, and the breakwater is always really easy to find because it sticks out and it's usually marked on maps like that. <clears throat> so um, and then white rock is that one that's in the middle of the flats that is exposed at all tides, um, and this is the area that people. Um, think of as the flats when they talk about recreating, even though they might not know that. Um, so there's the white rock. And so here's Cohasset Channel, Harbor Channel, white head on that side. Um, and then this is the mean low water that they surveyed from the edge of the channel. Um, it comes in a little bit this way, just as the tide um, starts coming in. It goes right to the edge of white rock, and then <clears throat> there's a, some, a little bit of ledge right there. Um, and this is all very gradual flats that the, um, where the mean low water survey is. <clears throat> so this is making its way toward um, the glades. And then up here, um, it's right on the edge of my screen. I'm not sure if you see it or not. Do you still see my yeah. curve? Okay. I do. So that is that's hog rock. So that's on our map, our map, and it's just off of the surveyed one. But it's there's or there's really a little edge of it right there. But that sticks out, and that um, low tide is connected by a sort of crescent-shaped sandbar. Okay, so that gets you oriented to that, and then <clears throat> we overlaid our. Um, the dots that we've collected to show where we've found presence of eelgrass. Uh, the darker green is a denser areas, denser areas of eelgrass. Um, the tan color is <clears throat> what we thought of as 25% coverage of eelgrass. And the light green here is 50% coverage. And then these smaller green dots, um, we used a different technique and we just decided, we were just checking to see whether eelgrass was present or absent. So we used sort of a middle Kelly green for that um, because those were not differentiated based on the coverage type. And then you might wonder why there is eelgrass here and here. Um, and that is a few rogue plants that we found behind ledges. So there's often a little pocket back there. So they look like outliers and they kind of are, but they actually it was real plants sitting there in a kind of a tide pool behind the ledges. Uh, um, oh, wow, that was, oh, uh, I know what that is. Okay, so then if you wanna look at that, so there's the surveyed map without our overlay, just so it's clearer. Yep, and uh, we can, I can post both of them, yep. And then, um, this is our eelgrass dots, um, just based uh, with that without a background or without a very substantial background, um, and that that's it zoomed out a bit. Um, so, hog rock is here. So that previous map um, just was like the lower half of this one. Yeah. So I think that I'm happy to answer questions about that. And I also have the maps handy uh, from whence those uh, dots came, <clears throat> if anybody has questions about any of them. Well, good work. Okay. Um, and there's, there's some exciting things happening this spring. Um, so the MassDEP is gonna do their flyovers 
um, in May and June, and we may have some other research going on out there um, in uh, the end, toward the end of May, and then CSER students will be they're stuck in school until June 30th. So I'm not sure if we can get out there before much before the beginning of the summer with um, with our students. But um, we enjoy your questions because it helps drive our research. Um, great transition. Are there questions? Speaking of questions, are there questions um, from the committee? Um, I'm not sure. I, I have a question. Um, <laughs> Thanks a lot for that uh, presentation. And I'm, I'm just curious to know if, and again, I'm not sure the technology here, if we could you know, take this mean low tide and actually put the proposed, at one point, we're gonna do it tonight, obviously, um, the proposed, so we get a perspective on where the proposed farms are and how many of them are within the mean low and how many of them are not, or how much of them are. Yeah, so um, I can answer that, Dave. Um, that's a good question. So our proposed farms, the first round, none of them would be, or there'd be like corners of them um, by the mean low. There, there was nothing that was specifically all, you know, outside the mean low. Okay. So what we would have, what we would have to do on the second round, is think about um, proposing um, places, uh, farms for the between the eelgrass and the mean low. So you could put, you know, a couple, you know, down here, a couple in the middle and a couple over here. I mean, you or like one over here, one over here, one over here. So can we get, can we get an none idea? over here, one over here, right. one over here. I mean, you know, you guys can't see my cursor, but size wise, acreage wise, how big is that area? Again, I'm not real familiar with this area. You know, between the two outliers there that are running along the mean low tide, how how far is that distance wise? Does anybody know? Between the um, mean the two low, outli no, the two outlying. Just to get a sense of size here, between those two outlying um, light greenish dots that are along the mean low tide that are sort of out that you called outliers. Yeah. The, the ones from the pool, Dave? The ones that are yeah. closest to um, situate land. Yeah. Or, or, or Susan Bryan, is there any way to equate the size of your circles into acreage? Might be helpful too. Yeah. Susan. Let me switch the sharing thing and yeah. let me share a different screen and I can do it for you live, I believe. <clears throat> yeah, this one, I think. Yeah. Come on, little I'm cursor to go. Oh, we're like on, on Cape Cod. <laughs> yeah, I know. I think, yeah, yeah, race point. <laughs> Yeah, race yeah. points looking great right now. Um, uh, <laughs> so, so yeah, I mean, we were hesitant to put boxes and to you know because we recognize this um, this go at it. You know, this these proposed would be much would be smaller. You know, right. maybe a couple farms, maybe you know, maybe two, maybe three, maybe four. Um, maybe more, but um, that's that's about what you could, I mean, you could put them along the line pretty, pretty easily. Right. I just wanted to get a sense of how so, much acreage there was between that line. Yeah. You know, we talking about three acres wide, that channel. Oh, between yeah. that, I can tell like, if we went back to yeah. that. Um, she's trying to zoom in. Yeah, she's, she's trying, trying to zoom in. She's doing a good job of it. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, now it's really zoomed in. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> now we can see the like specks of sand. <laughs> Drained situate harbor. Drained cohesive harbor. This is a this is a great layer. We love this layer. It's um called uh, map box satellite imagery, and it's it's just it's really cool. <clears throat> okay. So let me turn that off. And you were looking for that. All right. So there's white rock, and there's the other outlier. So those are exactly the ones you were looking for. So I can measure those. Um, 
with this. What units would you like? What? Uh, it doesn't matter. Miles, maybe. <laughs> Miles? It will be less than a mile by a long time. Yeah, yeah. yeah, is it half a mile? Yeah. Why don't we go with feet so we can translate that to acres? Okay, all right. What's feet versus feet US? I'm assuming we want feet US. Take our feet, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> okay, and then we go. Doo -doo. Um, and now my box is in the way, isn't it? But it was somewhere about here. How about, how about I give you something like. How about the one just west of it, that other, that other closest to the outlier, going across the channel? You know what Toward I mean? Toward this channel? Move, this one? To move, the left, yeah. yeah no, 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 to the right. To the right, right, right. Keep going right. That one that you're pointing at right there, that one. The big exactly. one, okay. Right. So that's 381 feet. Okay, all right. And, and if you think of the tie, the tie line is pretty close to that dot. So yep. between that one and like the significant eelgrass bed, it's probably four. So that says 477. So yeah. that's like a football field. So or two acres wide. Yeah. yeah, two acres wide is a good. 212 plus 212 with the room in between. If we wanted to yep. squeeze two in, um, whatever, square. I know there can be any shape, but all right, that helps a lot. Yeah. That was helpful. And then let's see if I can zoom out a little bit. <clears throat> this is the one thing I don't like about ArcGIS is this box is always in the wrong place. And you can't move it. No. <clears throat> All right, so I can measure any, no, now I can give you this one if you want. Okay, so 1,300 feet to that. Yeah, quarter mile or so. And then again, you have, oh, nice. yeah. and I guess you want, <clears throat> so this is the twins right here, that ledge. Yeah. So that's a, that's a good reference point if you want that one. And I think that one there might be like a little pocket behind something, but. Um, that there is 265 feet, and then the main group of it, let's say somewhere in there. <clears throat> okay. That helps a lot, just a perspective on sizes and, you know, what we can think about further down into the meeting about where we would consider the idea of proposing <laughs> the alternative round two spots. Thank you, Susan. You're welcome. Yes, thank you. That was really helpful. Context. <clears throat> Are there other questions from the committee to start? Does the Merrill Engineering Survey show the uh, disputed boundary? Does it show the disputed boundary? Co-asset situate boundary. You mean the, um, so I guess the disputed would be, I guess to answer that question, the disputed would be the boundary from the mean low toward the land, the flats, right? So um, what would be in dispute is uh, not toward the high tide line, right? <clears throat> Because it's mean low, mean high would be the dispute. So um, good question. That the that would be, does it show the mean high? Um, I think it, I can't remember if it does. I can pull that up again for can you. Can you pull that up again? Yep. Um, I think. Let me get... Do you mean this line here? I think I think that's it right there, that squiggly line. Is this, that the mean high? If you zoom in, it oh, might say it. Um, let's see. Okay. 
Um, I, I don't, let's see. Of course, all the legends are always in the wrong place on the Zoom screen, right? Um, um, I was trying to look at the other maps we had from the first go round. It, you know, it's up toward the beach. It's basically close toward the beach with the, the mean high. And then the, the, this, the line, the mean low would be the blue line. So it doesn't look like the mean high is on there. Uh, right. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I don't think so. Cause I, it's basically the beach rack, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, yeah. Yeah. The high, yeah. The high tide line is uh, where, you, where you see the sand here. Yeah. The tide comes up the beach. Um, right. So I, this is like a mid tide thing. Cause this is a bit of old, this is a bit of salt marsh that still exists. These two pieces that stick out. <clears throat> So it's the it's basically that beach line to the to the mean low blue line. Yeah. What if I can use for our best? I mean it's not exact. Yeah, this is MLW line, right? Yep. And then this is mean high water line, I think. It's really teeny. Okay, so maybe it is. So we're right, it's right at the light, um, but, that beach line. But this is a light blue one. Yep. Yeah, and then at high tide you go the water's all the way back to here. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, that looks right to me. Yeah. I wish there was a way, Susan, that we could overlay where the originally proposed ones were, even though, you know, it doesn't matter much for the new round, but on this map again, we're compared because on the old maps we did we had a it was almost a I remember seeing something about mean low, but it certainly wasn't an engineered survey of it. It was to not, see, no. To see where um, we were proposing. So because our previous map, um, which I think it's on our website actually. Um, so I could actually, I could look for it, but our previous map didn't have the, um, it just zoomed in on the flats. Right. It didn't have that. So um, the previous ones were outside of, uh, to the side, you know, and then some, some right in the middle. Right. Okay. Any, any other questions? I guess I could open it up. I can also open it up for questions. Do you, Susan, can you put the other map up? Mm -hmm. The one with the dots? I can open it up for questions or let me open it up for questions. Um, some, if you have any questions regarding the map, um, the public, if you could raise your hand or if you're on video, you can wave your hand, but I don't see anyone on video. And I don't see anyone with questions. It's eight o'clock. Uh, okay. So, um, okay, so no questions, we can put it back to the, to the, so, I mean, we can talk about step moving forward. Um, we could, steps forward, we should probably um, post the map and um, send it to possibly to the original applicants to ask them if they are interested. I don't know. I kind of open it up for the group to have any suggestions. Didn't we agree to reach out to them? To, to, to we have uh, reached out to them, and I actually see some of them. I think some of them are currently on the phone right now. Right, at least one. I think I see two or three, maybe. Um, well, I'm not sure they're going to publicly publicly talk about it, but um, so we reached out just for them to be at this meeting. I've reached out um, on previous meetings and I have people have suggested that they're interested, but wanted to know um, where specifically. So no, right now we have where specifically. Well, we haven't proposed where specifically. We, we haven't, have, true. We, we have could the idea. propose even more where specifically. So if we go back to that map, Actually, Susan, can you go back to the one with um, the overlay, the Merrill with the overlay? Yeah. 
so the Merrill, the first, uh, what is that? Okay, there we go. So right, if we're on the marrow with the overlay um, in between the eelgrass spots and the mean low would be, and we said that's kind of was close to two acres, we could in width, we could put some, propose some spots within that line, within that area. Um, I do want to point out, and I do want to flag for this, that like this is like our best guess at eelgrass, probably one of the best guests <laughs> everywhere. At During this process, um, when we get toward the um, end of the process, the DMF does, scientists do come out. So they would take what we've done um, and they do a survey on the eelgrass and any other aquatic life, whether it's... Um, oysters or clams. They won't come out before. No, but I mean, we've done, um, they've come out before on um, clams and whatnot. No, I'm just thinking about this whole process that these applicants and our, yeah. our commission and then the selectmen would have to go through and the decisions We're and then. I mean, we're pretty it. confident on the eelgrass. I mean, there's okay. been a lot of people swimming in that area. And yeah. I have, I will say, I have even walked that area. Um, and there's, there's definitely eelgrass out there, but there's most definitely space between the mean low and where the eelgrass starts. And might they need a historical data from what maybe Susan's group did or? You know, when was so the they generally, time? so that's a great question. Let me answer that because I did talk to DMF about this. Generally, they use the flyover the data and the flyover data goes further out. I mean, this is way more specific than the flyover data. Um, mm. The flyover data um, basically just has the dark green dots. So if you looked at this, this map and took out all the light green stuff and all the, uh, what's that peach colored, and, and like white colored, if you took out all of those and just look at the dark green, that's basically all they capture. So it's a, it's a little bit, it's further, it's quite a bit further out. So and they do, probably, and they do it each probably year. another two acres, two acres out. So we've, we've gotten it even more specific um, than they usually even survey. And they do a flyover annually, Susan? They do not. It's every five not. years, right, okay. Susan? Yeah, it's four or five. Four, okay. Anyway, they're they're going to do it in the spring. Right. Okay, but they have something to compare it to to see whether it's growing. They or do. Not. Yes. Okay. Yep. And, and the and the system is dynamic. I mean, coasts coasts are dynamic. They're always yeah. changing. Um, you know, every storm that comes through is going to rip up a bunch of stuff, and you know, more things new 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 plants are going to get established. But in general. Um, in general, it seems that this, these meadows are pretty stable, I think, okay. um, but, but DMF is your, um, D, D, or DEP is your official uh, source, not us. So Susan, we, we need to talk about and have the commission bounce around ideas on how to move forward, right? Yep. Hey, Mike's, Mike's joined us, by the way. Oh, great. Um, yeah, so let's let's talk about it. What what do we people what do we think? How, how should we so proceed? Mike, Mike, did you see? I know you're coming in late. Did you see the so the mean low is Susan? Can you move your cursor on it? So see the mean low, and that's surveyed by Merrill. Um and yeah, and, I, I was on the cell phone. I heard all the talk about. Oh, it. great, perfect, perfect. Okay, I want to make sure you were caught up. So the discussion uh, is how to move. You know, moving forward, how do um, you know the select board would like to move forward on this? Um, yeah. So, I can talk. What about would we propose as far as um, numbers and spots and where should they be and whatnot? Right. Well, that and that's where marine fishery comes in. Um, I talked to marine fisheries today about this. This whole area is still uh, truly approved, which is open year round. 
So, um, talked to Jeff Kenny today. He had no issues with us moving forward. He knows the struggle we had with the lawsuit, things like that. But ultimately, it's, it's going to come down to the Marine Fisheries walking that site again, doing another site visit and looking at where the eel grass is and things like that. And I know you talked about before, I think um, somebody, somebody brought it up about the previous maps. The, the, one of the first maps we had like 27 grids on there. Then we scaled it down to the to the two sides of the channel that, that went back in towards mine it. And then um, at the last meeting, we talked about maybe uh, shrinking the plots down to three quarters and asking some of the potential farmers if they thought that would work. And then I know there was a lot of communications about the moves and the mean low, high, low water, things like that. So, I mean, all those things are, are going to be answered when we walk it again with marine fisheries. Obviously, marine fisheries has had some turnover. Um, so we're working with new folks. So we had to get through that as well. But um, we're going to have to do another site visit. And I prefer to do it now versus waiting until April or May. So because they want, the farmers have already lost two years already with this. So I kind of want to get, get out there like, like next couple of weeks. So would they do that? Because my understanding was it was further along in the process. Would they do a, a walk on this? Yeah, we can request okay. it. Okay. I mean, okay. And then for Shellacky before, he was um, very motivated, very knowledgeable with this, but now we have to find his replacement to come back out there and go through the same steps again, which shouldn't take that much, especially when we've already done the legwork already. Um, maybe we, we send these maps and grids over to Marine Fisheries as soon as tomorrow, so they're well aware so they can look at it and get acclimated to the area to, to uh, save some time here. So would we propose, <clears throat> ahead of time, would we propose like two over here, two over here, you know, at the top spot, two at the, would we wanna communicate that with them as well? We we could propose it and say, and say based on why are reasons why we're picking these spots, i.e., um, no eel grass, things like that. But yeah, we could do that. Maybe easier for us, but they're still going. To, they're still going to want to go out there. At least they should, because they're technically supposed to. Yep. Okay. So, um, so that you that is the next step for for this and you will contact the um, DMF? Yeah, um, the next step would be to um, reach back out to the to six, seven farmers that we first chose to make sure they're still interested to see how many plots we have available. Um, I guess it, it would be up to, to maybe us to see if we open it up for more spots. There was an email I saw today from um, a, a, a realtor that talked about working closely with Cohasset, maybe opening some plots up to Cohasset. Um, that's for, not for me to decide, let <clears throat> to decide. So, I mean, those are things I think that we as a committee should be hashing out um, at the next meeting. And maybe this is a time where uh, it looks like COVID being lifted a little bit. Maybe we get back in person. I think more in person meetings are more productive yeah. and we get back to our two weekly, um, bi-monthly meetings or, I mean, to buy two weekly meetings every two weeks meeting again okay um i can um take that action item to um send this map to the um to the people who applied originally and ask if they're interested in um in the proposed area yeah, should I we highlight the proposed area on this map so it's very clear and it's i do have a question i asked if uh, again, I, I got a little confused with the organizations that are going to be walking and, and Mike, what you said, um, who gives the final, final approval? Susan, who are you talking about that? that That's a DMF. We, uh, as far as it being suitable for aquaculture would be the DMS biologist. The so who's going to walk the site, Mike? It would be the uh, staff of marine fisheries, the, the aquaculturist that's in charge of this area. Um, they would make sure that there's no eel grass impacts, things like that. Then we can talk about the navigation uh, concerns that we talked about before that came up at previous meetings going into the backside of mine. It. We can address that. We can address the mean low, low water, the mean low water, the high tide mark, all those things to show that we kind of done our due diligence and these are the areas that we felt will work the best. So those and, two different organizations, just so I understand them, are 
Department of Marine Fisheries is going to do an initial evaluation. They're, they're it. They are the ones that say yay yeah, or nay. They okay. And, and Mike, you're saying you can get them in early to approve a proposed area before we even reach back out to the applicants to say, that's what I'm, if I'm an applicant, I'm thinking, where are you proposing these areas? Um, well, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, based on the map we're looking at right now, this needs to go to the state to get their their approval, their their blessings, their comments back. I think that should be done first. You know, the town sh we we should be reaching back out to the six seven applicants that were originally selected to make sure that they are still interested. And if they are not, we should probably open up the candidate pool a little bit further. I know there was talk about partnering with folks in Cohasset and maybe. Oyster aquaculture is from Cohasset. That's probably a discussion that should be had as well. But I would, I would really like to get back to maybe salvaging yeah. this. And we don't need six or seven, you know, interested. This is, I think we're still calling this a very pilot program. And yeah. if it's three, it's three. Uh, yeah. And we had ordered them and, you know, we had ranked them. And uh, if we decide on three, guess what? Only three get it. Um, so staying engaged with the applicants is good, but I don't right. know that I would expect the applicants to put out much more energy in, you know, reapplying or anything like that. Oh, no. yeah. I'm not saying they have five, but I think we had six or seven originally selected. If we reach out to them, a couple of them might say, well, you know what, it's been a lot of time, I moved on to something else. Or they all might say, hey, I'm still, I'm not still interested. But, and then if all seven are interested, the pool, the candidate pool should stay to those seven. And then, you know, we already ranked them once. I don't think there's reason to rank them again. Then maybe it's the top three if that if we have three plots. And that's why I talked about the last meeting. Maybe rather than having an acre plot, maybe we can have a three-quarter acre plot. You know, and I and I, I'll say it again. I said it almost every meeting that the town should the towns should have a stake in this, that a half an acre should be set aside for the towns. Situate co has to be utilized for previous projects for education for kids, et cetera, uh, growing things of that nature. So, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm gonna... I yeah, believe I... that too. But talking about the uh, you know, the next step forward, it would be engage the people that were as that letter so um, effectively said in order to move forward with less. Um, uh, challenge we need to engage the the uh the groups that are dead against us i think all right anybody else have any thoughts on that um well i have a couple of thoughts first you said you know you didn't think that the applicants would put much more effort i think it's only just an email saying are you interested so for them to respond and say yes or no that's really that's all what we'd be asking for at this point. So I wanted to be clear on that. Um, and I think it can happen at the same time that we reach out to DMF because we're just right. asking if they're interested. It's not that they're um, putting that much effort in. And then we, if none of them respond, then we also have answers that, hey, no one's interested anymore. Um, so that, um, yeah, and I think it can happen at the same time or very close to the same time. Okay, um, should we see if there's any, any other questions or any comments from people who are from the public? Unmute um, everybody. Um, I've got, is, does people want to raise their hand or? Oh, Jamie's raising his hand. Let me see. Um, all right, I just asked you to unmute. So you should be able to unmute, Jamie. Hello. Um, I just had a comment. Can you uh, state your name, your full my name, name is and Jamie address? Jamie Davenport, please. 16 Booth Hill Road. Thank so you. Um, I just wanted to uh, point out I guess you have to decide whether you're going to send an email out to the original applicants before or after you've consulted the DMF. If you choose to do so before consulting the DMF, and you include this surveyed map, it might help to um, add another line, like zoom in, 
and add another line uh, at least 25 feet away from all the eelgrass. And then that would give the applicants an idea more of where the other, we know where the southern side of, of these farms would be, but we don't know exactly where the northern side of these farms would be until you were to add, I mean, you can see it kind of right now, a, a big blob, but you'd have to kind of add a line saying 25 or just to be completely um, sure, you know, 50 feet away from eelgrass uh, and then send out an email to the applicants asking if they're still interested because that would give them a little bit more of a, an idea, you know. Right. I was saying, Jamie, just a highlighted area of the proposed, you know, not any specific rectangles or squares or just right. highlighting just like the a area. Lasso, where... A lassoed region, yeah. Right. Um, I was a little bit concerned at first because it didn't, I know, you know, we're zoomed way out right now. Uh, it didn't look like there was a whole lot of distance, but there, it looks like it's, a, you know, at least a good 250 feet from that line to the closest um, eelgrass beds, except for the, 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 the few outliers there. And I would imagine that, that the rule that you must stay, that aquaculture must stay 25 feet from any existing eelgrass is probably whether it's 75, 175, 50, or even 25%, I'm guessing, you know. Yeah. Yeah, because it's so zoomed out, adding a line would be like basically writing on the dots. Um, it's so close, but we can, that's a good, we can try to do that. That's a question for DMF, because their yeah. line is gonna be different than something with, you know, a kid wading in and finding one plant that is invisible from the air. <laughs> yeah they don't usually do that they usually look at the aerial yeah okay are there other questions i don't see anyone else raising their hand okay all right so i guess we're if there's no more questions and we're clear on next steps Oh, Dave, are you asking a question or no? Okay. If there's no other questions and we're clear on next steps, um, we're all set for the topic, for this agenda topic. Okay. The next, um, and we will, part of the discussion was to also get back into um, starting meeting more um, so that we can be engaged, engage the community in this discussion. Um, so we will also be um, doing that and schedule something at the beginning of um, March. So the next um, topic was, um, is recreation. Do you wanna give an update, Mike? Do you have the, sh I just wanna, before you start, do you have the maps or do you want me to share them? Cause I do have them and I can do it for you. Uh, talk to them. Um, it's probably gonna be hard to explain to people what exactly all it is, but um, maybe we just put that online as well with the rest of the stuff. Okay. But I can, do you want me to show them now too while you yeah. talk? Okay. Sure. Okay. Do you want to start and I can show the first map? Right. Does everyone see it? Yeah, that's, that's actually two of them. That's the first one. Right. So this, this, do you want to show both of them or do you want me to show? So that's the first one. And this yeah. is the second one. Do you want me to show the first first? I show them both first and we can get back to the first one. Okay. Second so one, <laughs> first one. So basically the, the first model here is like for a 300 meter I think they called it and it was scaled down to a 10 meter, which took a lot more time and effort. And of course, a delay of up to the July 1st before we have this back. Um, also too, it's gonna cost a lot more money. Um, they were, Marine Fishers allocated $100,000. They think it's gonna be um, quite extensive in the $80,000 range for this study alone, based on the amount of work that they had to do. Um, but they did say that they didn't uh, first uh, uh, factor in all the tributaries and creeks that are in behind Maycombers Ridge, um, Truant Island, all those areas. 
up the North River, all those extra creeks, all that helps towards the flow of the um, the outflow to the river. So that's why they had to scale down a little further with a 10 meter study, which is the second one, which it looks a little crazy looking, but that's what you're seeing there is the, all the extra creeks that has pools of water. Uh, I did have marine fisheries out last Wednesday looking at this and explaining to them how the water moves. I even showed them on the outgoing tide how all the water comes out of the North River and nothing from the North River goes down the South River because the North River is actually stronger than the South River with tidal flow. So that was good for them to see that. So I came up, gave them a bunch of tidbits of why at least now the South River should be open and it should have never been closed in my opinion. I wasn't negotiating with them or anything, but I was kind of explaining them because they, they had never been there by boat explaining the amount of water comes out of there, the depths of the water, and how it comes from 24 feet to 10 feet, and then you get past the spit and it just opens up for tidal flow coming out of there. Um, even on this day, it wasn't a big, big low tide. You can see the current line coming out of the North River and the South River, and you can see how the North River was pushing back against the South River flowing out, which to me would indicate that nothing out of the sewer plant is even getting down the South River which we probably all knew that well in advance of the study um, with some of those on the call knew that, but I am trying to advocate to at least get something out of this. Um, with this study, I'm told that it's gonna take a little more time, which we probably all knew was coming anyway. Um, they, they hope to have this done by July 1st. Um, so obviously this year is out again, which will be another year lost. But I think that we are thankful to have this done they were hoping to fund five studies of modeling and Cohasset was next. And, and I don't have enough money left to do Cohasset next. And I talked to Jeff Kennedy today about this and I said, hey, where do we stand with oyster aquaculture? I mean, do we need this modeling with this cohasset sewer plan? He said, no, to date and time, the, uh, the citrus side is wide open. He said, if Cohasset wanted to do it, they would probably have hurdles to jump through. But as far as situate and Briggs, that area is truly approved, which, um, you know, barring the legality with the lawsuit, the, the town should be moving forward to get back to where we were with the OSHA aquaculture. So that's kind of where we stand in a nutshell. Um, there are some comments underneath these little slides here that um, I think me or Susan can get up online. And it, it basically just talks about what, it, what, it, what it's looking at here. So um, I did ask, a couple of times for a two week update. Um, and this is the last one that I got um, a couple of weeks ago. So this is where we're at with the rivers. Not all good news, but at least it's moving forward and, and they are putting in the effort to do the work and it, it, it is going. But are there questions from the committee? Dave, I see your hand up. Mike, was it you remember the last meeting? I think it was they were talking about UMass Dartmouth or something doing these studies. Is that who did these? Yeah, this is it from the SMAT. This is it. Yeah, this is it. Okay. And uh, they, they said they, that they were going to start November 1st, and it appears that they did. Um, I'm not going to say that we're lucky that and you're more fortunate to have this study done because it should have been done. You know, the, the flats should have never been closed anyway, in my opinion, but I'm thankful that our local constituents got this money for the Missionary Fisheries to do this study. Um, I think they were, like I said, I think they were shocked that it's going to cost us much to complete all this, which is up to $80,000 per ten. But at least we know what, where the rivers will stand going forward. Unfortunately, this is kind of where we're at. Are they accepting of any of the uh, North and South River watershed tests and all that? Not at they, all. They never have been. Um, they, we, we are still doing water samples of the rivers. So the last test in the river were, I think, December 14th or um, they were to be posted today online. I actually sent the town October, November, December samples. And I think October, November were already up online. Um, and uh, the rivers was added today, I hope. And also, Brace Harbor from December was also added. They're only mandated to do five runs in, um, in certain areas. But like I said, at least they're still testing this water. If they didn't test it at all, 
it would be a reclassification. So I commend them for at least still doing that. I know it's not enough, but you know, I'm trying. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get all the answers I can and share it. But this is the last correspondence that I got from Marine Fisheries. Um, and there are some comments that you can't see. I'm not sure if Susan can scroll down or up. And you yeah, can kind of I can't up. because they put it like in an email text. They didn't actually put it, but I can read what they said. So the um, the screenshot below, so this screenshot they're talking about um, is part of the new grid being designed. If you look closely, you can see that the grid now follows the shoreline more closely and covers the North and South rivers, their creeks, tributaries, and marshes. Obviously this is very labor intensive process um, to, the, to the grid. This, this grid versus, and he's talking about versus the other, which let me get back to this one. So this one, he said it didn't cover all the tributaries, I think specifically up here and throughout here. And the new grid that they did is more intensive modeling to cover all of the tributaries. Um, so I can, I, it wasn't on the thing. He had put it in a text thing that didn't show up on the picture. So we can try to add that to something and then post it, Mike. But that was the language that he said. So that's moving at least. It is, it is I don't completely understand all of it, um, but I mean, talking to the state and they said it's, it's, it's going and they said it was starting November and it appears that it did and now we're February. So, I mean, it's what they are reminding they, everybody about the process. Yeah, this I mean, is we, still the state enforcing the federal law that we disagreed with. And so we'd still need the state to basically, I think, go back and um, reconsider the application of that federal law. That's the basic situation here, right? I have asked for at least to have the South River open because I know there is no water from the North River going down the South River. Right, so that's our focus. Full on here as well. I'm not saying I agree with all of it. I'm not, you know, I like the shellfish too, and I, but I can, sit there and watch the current go just, just as well as anybody else does coming down the river all day long. You can see where the water flows, especially when you have foam on top of it. And there's no water from the North River going down the South River. So, so your attempt now is just to take the South River out of their, um, their prohibition. The South River should have never been closed in my opinion. Right, right. Are there other questions? From the committee, should I open it up to um, any yeah. public? Anybody. Yep. Any questions from the public? I don't know. I can just, I'm happy to just unmute any, everybody if that's. Um... At, at the end, too, Susan, I definitely want to talk about the other vessel sink a few weeks ago. I definitely want to touch on that. True. That's true. So I did unmute, but um, so Mike also wanted to talk about the um, vessel that sunk off the coast. Right. Any questions so far? Or you, I didn't you... see no questions so far. So I'm sure a lot of people saw in the news there's a uh, surf claim vessel, vessel Bing Bing out of Gloucester that sunk off of Citra two weeks ago, um, just south of Fourth Cliff in about 36 or 40 feet of water. Um, that's went down pretty quick. You know, all guys, all personnel on board were saved, thank God. Um, so Marine Fisheries had some concerns that the shellfish that were on board, there's approximately 1,500 uh, pounds of surf clams that are in the boat and in the dredge. Um, and um, they're, they're requesting to get those out of there for potential contamination from the diesel fuel that when the boat went down. Um, so some, some thoughts that, you know, the vessel sitting in, you know, 35, 36 feet of water, call it what you will, depending on the tide, you know, how much diesel fuel could have contaminated the clams in the boat when the boat sunk, I don't really know. I was there, I saw a lot of diesel fuel on the surface and a lot went towards the beach. It was um, actually a heavy east wind in an outgoing tide of the river, so all, all kind of dissipated in that area. 
Um, there was drone footage from the next day with a small machine going north. But if, if the clams are not removed from this boat, they will close down this area for more commercial. And they're also worried that people could come back into this area and we dredge it and potentially self-contaminated clams. So I was kind of in the impression that they would probably purge within 30 days as other contaminated clams do, do uh, purge within 30 days from uh, closed areas during propagation projects. Um, I felt that it would be easier and safer to just close the area for a couple more weeks and let the area sit and have those clams purge, but they were pretty adamant to get those out of there. So that has been added to the uh, salvage, salvage dredge plan to um, remove the clams, put them in a dumpster, and um, properly dispose of them so no one can eat them, so they don't reach anybody's dinner plate. But I just wanted to highlight this is kind of one of those things with shellfish and being the cost of that. You know, you have you have three things here. There's something vessel, you have life, life saved, property lost, and you have an environmental, um, environmental, environmental incident, which is the diesel fuel, but you also have a human consumption thing as well. So all of those things kind of go in part and parcel to like a vessel sinking. So um, I'm well in tune with what's going on and I got Marine Fishy hooked up with the Coast Guard investigators and we're all kind of watching and waiting to see, to see what the next steps are. But um, I'm real interested to see actually what happened here with the, with the sinking of this vessel. I have my own, you know, theories of what happened and, you know, I'm not an expert and all that stuff, but um, I believe it was pretty evident was here. But in the end, it was kind of a miracle that the lady in Marshfield behind the bridge ran Preston Terrence actually saw this. So um, it's 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 miraculous. It really is. Um, I don't think the seas were conducive that day for dredge fishing personally, but you know I'm not a commercial fisherman either. I don't make my living doing that, and I, I get that guys need to go out there and bay water to make a living. Um, it just, I wish it, it could have been done much more safer, but in the end, everybody lived and it's, it's a good story. That's all I have. Are there any questions about that incident or anything else, um, Dave? Mike, do you think that the boat will be salvaged? Do you think they'll get it off, off the bottom eventually? With, within seven days, we're hoping, yeah. The salvage plan, um, the salvage plan has been done. It's been approved by the Coast Guard. It's a pretty good plan, but uh, it was kind of lacking the shellfish piece. That's why I kind of got involved as the shellfish constable and um, notified marine fisheries because they were concerned about people going out there digging them up because it, it wasn't very deep. I know a few people have dove on it already. I got pictures of it. I can share with you of how it looks on the bottom with a depth sign or a sonar. So it looks like there's a lot of codfish on it already, which I'm not surprised because there's 1,600 pounds of clam city. So, it would probably tend to attract some fish. But, um, you know, the main thing is that it's a, it's a hazard to navigation. And that's the number one priority for me. I get the mm -hmm. shelf, it, but if we get in our Easter, that thing could move very easily. The way it's sitting now, starboard, uh, 30 degrees to starboard. So it appears that there still is air in, in the boat. And, um, you know, the nor'easters move big boulders and it'll, it'll, it, it could easily move this thing as well. If it got to a beach, it, it'd be even worse. So. Mm. Oh, I'm, I'm all for getting it out of there first. So you think it'll come out in seven days from today or seven day operation? Been out within seven days of a couple of days ago, but they're, they're waiting for the time window to do it. I know they had to bring in the deck barge into Scituate Harbor. It was not there already with the crane. Um, and once they have a south, south, predominant south, southwest wind for three days, they'll conduct a solid operation. There's no mm. way they can put a northwest, north or east winds. There's just no way. So they're kind of hiding behind the cliff a little bit and you really need a south wind, southwest wind to really help them. So uh, based on the weather tomorrow and Friday night, that's, that's, that's be a, a negative go as well. So mm. probably next week. Thank you. So, but if you're interested, you can probably see it from the beach to take a look at it. And I'm, I'm pretty interested in it because I really want to know what happened and you know why the EPIRB didn't deploy and why the life raft didn't deploy. That, those are things I'm really interested in. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Are there other questions? No. Okay. Not a lot of questions this meeting. A lot of people, but not no one has a no one has any questions. Um, okay. What's that? 
do, do you guys want to get back to meeting every two weeks? I mean, the information from marine fisheries for the, the modeling hasn't been as quick as I would want, but maybe we can just shift focus and get back to the oyster aquaculture piece and I'll re-engage marine fisheries again tomorrow. If you can send me that that uh, map and grid and um, yep. get back to get back to I'm school. I will post all of um, the stuff. I'll try to do it tonight, actually, and then send it to you and send it out to the um, applicants. And then I will um, search for some times. If um, is Wednesday a good good day good day for people? Sure. Yeah. So, Susan, what are you going to say to the applicants? Are you at all interested in this area? If we actually, why don't we discuss what I should say yeah, to the applicants, right, and right. we can vote on it, and then I will just say it. <laughs> And Mike, what do you it. think we should say? I, I think they should be given a copy of the map, send email it to them, um, give them a chance to look it over, to discuss it with their business partners, et cetera, or their own selves, and just say the town's in the process of going back to marine fisheries and re-engaging the oyster aquaculture for this area. Are you still interested since you were the original applicants? Something to that effect. Like I said, some people may have moved on. Some people may still be interested, but... Yeah. I think the original people have been through thick and thin over the last some two years and, you know, they went through the process and they're the ones that should have first shot before it right. goes any. Um, personally, I think if there's seven people or six people that we chose at first, if they're all interested, we should try to make room for them. I don't, I don't think it's fair to reduce it to three people. I mean, they, they were the original people and that's those the folks that should be out there. You know, yeah, whether it's three quarters an acre, half acre, or full acre, yeah, or one. That's, if that's what it comes to, and that may turn people as well. But that's why I said in the last meeting that maybe to satisfy everybody on the list, maybe, and that's why I asked. I've never oyster aquaculture. Maybe three quarters is enough to get going in a pilot program, you know. But I, I don't think we should discount you know, four other people basically down to three. I mean, if it was originally seven, if they're still interested, it should be that those people, if it's down to five and two people dropped off, maybe we, we hold it five for the power program before we go any further. But let's just see if it works. Yeah, Um. I mean, it's hard to, until we know who's interested, it's hard to say. So I think it is a good step to just check if they're interested. Do you think I should... Um, give a timeline to respond, like give them, I don't know, a week to respond. What's what's reasonable? Vacation next week, so I'd give them at least two weeks. Okay, two weeks. I'll give them two weeks to respond and maybe then um, we'll find a meeting after the response date. So whenever it's due, I'll make sure we, our next meeting is right after it's due. So two weeks to respond. And leave it open for their input, obviously, so they can formally address yep. whatever their concern, you know, I wouldn't be interested if it was less than an acre or, you know, uh, okay. if I didn't have two separate spots or whatever they might want to say, I would say leave the request open to see if we get any input from them. Okay. Uh, but again, the, the map you're going to send out will have a, a highlight of the area that we're thinking of proposing um, plots, right? Because it was confusing. Yeah. So it's between the high watermark and, and the, the dots. And the dots put by CCESR, whatever that group is. But yeah, by 50 feet, which is basically yeah. like a dot. Yeah. Or like a line right there. Okay. Susan, are I, we are we amending the the regulations that we published, the final version in uh, 29, 2019? Um, we may yeah. have to, depending on what, how we decide to go, right? Because they did say one acre. They said one acre and it says uh, uh, not more than 150 feet from the mean high water line. Um, well, it's definitely 150 feet from the mean high water line. <laughs> it's like a third of a mile. <laughs> I know, it's like a mile from the mean high water line. That may change the economics, who knows? Depending on how people are planning to get there. Yeah, so um, I we can also, as a group, review the regulations and see if there's things that we should amend. I, I don't know that we need to amend the one acre if we haven't decided that yet and propose amendments. So that's maybe that's a homework for everybody to look at the regulations. Okay. 
And it's a, so it's a broad, it's a broad request you're sending out. Are you still interested? Yep. That simple. Yep. Okay. Yep. And reply in two weeks. <laughs> And two weeks. So, is everyone in agreement? Do we need to vote on that? <laughs> and any uh, and any other input that you might have in this pilot program process? Yep. Just to. Okay. And then the next step would be after that we have to talk about. Again, I, I am interested in engaging the people that are invited to the meeting. Let them state their case and um, separate from a lawsuit. I like that woman. I forget her name's uh, email to you. It meant, assume this is happening in your backyard. How would you want to be, everybody's not going to be thrilled. Um, how can we move forward compromising and getting some people more satisfied, if that's the right term? Yeah, and thank you for mentioning that. We received a correspondence um, last yesterday evening, um, and I noticed that the person doesn't seem to be on the um, on the call, but I can invite her to our next meeting as well. I think that would be good for um, to talk about any concerns that she has. It's not only you, her, it's, her, it's also yeah. all the people she was communicating yep. about. Yep. Did you yep. say you sent that out, Susan? I don't recall. I did. Um, um, it was today. Yeah, I didn't. Check all your email addresses, maybe. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Some of you, I have like two email addresses. Yeah, I got a couple. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, I forwarded it. I know it was a late entry. Um, it was and I think 518. Yeah, it was too um, kind of too late to invite her to the meeting. Um, but we can we can um, add that to the next meeting. The um, any community concerns um, about the proposal, the scaled scaled back proposal. What and time? reach out to the people that had the lawsuit. Why not? Yep. What time did you send it, Susan? I still don't um, see it. Late this afternoon, like 5 o'clock. To your BCB SMA. Is that the wrong email? I don't want to say your email. I'm on like Facebook Live. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I'll resend it, Jeff. Um, thank it was a thank good, you. Um, I got I got the agenda and the uh, and the minutes. Oh, okay. We got five eighteen tonight. It came from Shellfish website or Shellfish email. I did not email get that. the Shellfish email, so it should say Shellfish from Shellfish. It won't be from me. And I will I will resend I will resend that and then also invite her to the next meeting that we schedule, and all the applicants that respond as well. And all the other people she mentioned, we can send invitations. Why not? Right. Why not? <laughs> a lot of those people like oysters. Yeah. Okay. Can I ask Mike one more question? Mike, you're still there? I am. How does that closure that, you know, when they close the shell fishing um, affect this process whatsoever in, in this Cohasset Harbor proposal? It, it, the Briggs area is, is right down the middle of the uh, channel line. All, yeah. all situated is open. It does. It doesn't yeah. doesn't impact us. Okay. So I, just confirming that. So I asked that question today to make sure that hey, if we move forward, like the classic the classification <clears throat> cover hasn't changed. The the line went a little more south, but all all that whole area is open. Okay. And then there's a small piece around the corner, Strawberry Point, that's closed. But then when you get down. By the glades and South Indian Rock, all of that's wide open. Wide open. Approved. All that's open. So, Perfect. Just wanted to confirm that. Yeah, and it's open right now. You can actually dig there tomorrow above 32 degrees. You can dig there tomorrow if you really, really want to. Mm. Oh, yeah, it's warmer tomorrow. Cool. Excellent. Okay. All right, we're making good progress. Um, and we have a lot to do in the next couple of weeks. Um, so is there anything else before we adjourn or motion to adjourn? Is there anything else? Well, yeah, so we'll just pick a date mid, mid March at this point. Right. Yeah, we can. How about March either a 9th or 16th or actually 
Yeah, 9th or 16th, but this is a thing. I'm going to have to check if there's room availability. Um, not if we want to do it in person, we can decide in person or Zoom. And then I'd either have to check for Zoom or. The senior center is awesome, Susan. I love the senior center. Mm -hmm. I agree, Dave. Yeah. Okay. I can do either date. I'm good either day. I mean, I, I, I think based on the, on the state laws with public meetings, where I think we're uh, still locked into having to provide both, right? I mean, I prefer meeting in person. I think it's more productive, quicker, less lag time, but that's just me. But. Well, um, I did, when we met in person, we didn't provide both, but we met in person with Facebook Live. Like, so um, Seth still came from Situa TV and recorded it. I don't know if it was like, I, there's a lot, it was, so it was on Facebook Live and then posted. So we've been doing that which is an option. All right. I, I just if think you, if we get into potential on rule and reg changes that we need to have that right in front of us and have a round table and, and hash that out, you know? Okay. We're really gonna, I mean, that, that took a long time to get through initially. So okay. <clears throat> I think a Zoom app really might delay things if that's, if that's the road, road, road we're going down. Okay. So um, 16 and 9th works for everybody? Yep. Uh, all yeah, right, I'll check for a senior center. You, you, you need to give people time to get back to you. And like I said, it's, it's school vacation next week. So. Yep. So, yeah, so two weeks would put us on the second, and then we get everything by the third, and we can meet on the ninth or the six on the ninth. So and then start up a uh, every two week cadence to get this through. Okay. All right, well, um, we have a lot to do in the next three weeks um, and, um, but we're making really good progress. Is there anything else, any walk on, anything else before we adjourn? Anyone want a motion to adjourn? So moved. You always Thank want you. to, Jeff. <laughs> Second by Adam. Okay, all in favor, I have to call people. Remember, um, Dave Freeman? Y yes. Scott. And Scott, what, is his audio working? He, oh, he, he said that. Yes. Okay. Thumb. His audio is having trouble. Jeff? Yes. Adam? Hi. Mike? And me? Yes. Okay, adjourn at 8.49. See you, everybody. Have a Bye. good one, everybody. Thank yep. you. Here.